the coronavirus is creating economic diminishment and I know that's an understatement but a lot of people aren't working because people are staying home on account of the quarantine rule and so big companies big corporations are really going to hurt and a lot of people are going to be laid off the stimulus package is going to keep things afloat somewhat but eventually the situation is going to implode and you are going to have a lot of negative economic results and the way i look at the coronavirus is like a, a nuclear bomb it's like what happens after a nuke hits its target the nuke drops it explodes it makes a giant mushroom cloud and then you think okay it's over because there is silence after the explosion there is silence after the mushroom cloud and it's like the calm before the storm because what happens after a nuclear bomb explodes is the impact and the impact has quite a huge radius and it is like a broom it's like a gigantic broom sweeping everything in its path and so the coronavirus can be compared to this because when we think when we think coronavirus we think virus don't get infected so we quarantine ourselves we prevent ourselves from getting infected by the virus and when the virus has reached its end and we think okay it's all over then we have to deal with the political and economic effects and the political effects are going to be a result of the economic effects because when you have a tremendous amount of unemployment when you have a lot of economic diminishment when you are dealing with a serious depression uh, people begin to turn away from the political establishment because it's the system that failed them ultimately it's the system that failed them so they are going to go to uh, political elements that would otherwise be considered fringe fanatical and radical and I think we are going to be seeing a lot of this in both continents North America and Europe um, think what happened after the 08 Great Recession uh, people began to turn to movements like Occupy Wall Street the system had failed them the government cared more about big financial institutions and establishments like uh, Lehman Brothers and you know well not Lehman Brothers but you know things like um, like Goldman Sachs and, and, and establishments like that and so they believed well you know the system has failed this the system is against the little guy the working man and so we are going to turn to Marxism and socialism and you are going to be seeing a lot of this in Europe as well a lot of this and it's probably going to be more fanatical in Europe than in North America just you know considering the differences between Europe and America considering the the two different histories of these areas um, Europe does have a very long history of turning to extremely violent radical ideologies uh, on account of economic diminishments uh, just look at the French Revolution the revolution in um, uh, in Bohemia look at the revolution uh, the uh, the German Revolution or the revolutions in the different German uh, kingdoms and principalities First World War Second World War in all of these events we saw the rise of extreme radical ideologies be it pan-germanism be it uh, Marxism be it national socialism be it the um, the radical ideology of the Enlightenment Europe has a very long history of this and what happened before the quarantine rule got imposed in France what happened you had the uh, the uh, Gilet Jaunes the yellow vest movement and the yellow vest movement lasted for a long time it started in 2018 and it, and it continued on and there were also um, other uh, demonstrations that were done uh, under a different guise it wasn't necessarily consisting of people with yellow vests but nonetheless they were workers demonstrations and they were all against the government against the system and why did it end it ended because of the quarantine rule it ended because people have to stay home now they have police on the streets they have uh, checkpoints everywhere so people have to stay home and I, I saw a video yesterday or actually about two or three days ago 
of E. Michael Jones. Uh, a lot of people have been telling me to look at his work, and I have. I actually bought two of his books, been watching his videos and things like this. And while I agree with much of what he has to say, there was one thing that he said in regards to France that I have to uh, disagree with. Um, because he says that, well, the reason why France did the quarantine was to stop the anti-government rallies. And let's say that that's true, right? Let's say that that is true. Let's say that observation is correct. If that is the case, the government is doing a pretty bad job by imposing a quarantine. Because what was the Yellow Vest movement all about? It was all about fighting government taxes. The French government did a, uh, a diesel tax. Uh, Parisians, people who live in Paris, don't really use cars. They walk, they take the subway, they take the bus, whatever. They take public transportation. Once you leave Paris and you're in the suburbs, people rely on cars. It's the same thing in the United States. People in New York City take public transportation. People in rural areas, people in suburbs, they rely on cars because nothing really is walking distance. And so people in Paris, you know, neoliberals, whatever, they're like, yeah, we support, you know, diesel tax. That sounds like a great idea, whatever. But a huge majority of the French people were against it. And it was mainly people who live in rural areas, people who live outside of the metropolitan areas, people who live outside of the metropolitan zones. And they protested against it. So these were anti-government demonstrations. Now, what's going to happen if you force people to stay home and not work? It's going to cause economic problems, economic damage and diminishment. So if anything, what the government in France is doing is putting the problem in a giant pot and leaving it on simmer with the lid on top. And eventually that lid is going to fly over and the whole thing is going to implode. It hasn't stopped the uh, anti-government demonstrations. It hasn't stopped anti-government sentiment. It, if anything, it is exasperating the situation. Um, there has been a lot of news in European publications about general strikes taking place in Europe, uh, specifically in Italy and France, mainly in Italy. All throughout Italy, there are general strikes in the north and the south. Who are doing these strikes? Employees who have to work during the quarantine. The reason why these people are doing a strike is because they are terrified of working. They are terrified of getting infected while working, is what I mean to say. And you can't blame them. Um, and what they are demanding uh, are safer work conditions. Um, and they are also demanding that hours be cut earlier, that, uh, that working hours be cut earlier, be reduced to an earlier time. And they also have the day of Sunday off. That's what they're asking for. And these are actually reasonable demands. And I completely sympathize with their cause, actually. I, I, I have to. Like you, and, and it's like most of the businesses in Europe are closed. But there are certain big corporations that are really telling, they're trying to force their employees to work during quarantine time. They're telling their workers, you have to work in the time of quarantine. And these people don't want to do that. You can't blame them. Um, for example, in, it, in uh, France, in the area called Saran, there is a giant uh, warehouse owned by Amazon. It's an Amazon facility where you know they put the packages in boxes and they deliver them and all that stuff most of these packages are goods that are not necessary and so these workers are saying hey you're, you're telling us to work during quarantine time we have to touch hundreds of boxes every single day and you're not even giving us access to uh, sanitation gel and so they're demanding um they're demanding safer work conditions. There was one French employee who, who in this Amazon warehouse in Saran got uh, coronavirus. He tested positive for coronavirus. And so that made the fears of the employees even more real. And so there was a huge general strike taking place in France. Now, what are the people going to say? They are going to say that we have here a multinational American corporation, Amazon, that does not care about the French people, that is using the French people as slaves for their own profit. And so why on earth are we allowing a foreign company to enslave our people? And this is only going to exasperate the sentiment against globalization. There was a, uh, an Italian right-wing thinker 
named uh, Roberto de Matai, I believe that's his name, he did a lecture recently saying that coronavirus will basically lead to the death of globalization, or at least a step towards the death of globalization. And situations like what happened in Saron, the general strikes in Italy, because the Italian workers are asking for the same things. They're saying they're making us work in unclean, uh, unclean uh, areas, and we could get coronavirus while working. Thousands of nurses and doctors have gotten coronavirus in Italy. Uh, dozens of d nurses and doctors have died while treating patients with coronavirus. And so they're saying, they're going to say the government has failed us. The government doesn't care about the people. The establishment doesn't care about the people. All they care about is serving multinational corporations. And you are going to be hearing rhetoric like this. And you've been hearing this for a long time, but you're going to be hearing rhetoric like this in a more intense manner. And here's another thing uh, that I wanted to point out. Um, years ago, I spoke with a French Nazi. Uh, his name is Xavier Perron. Now, he does not call himself a Nazi, at least not in public, but he uh, represents an organization called Civitas. It's a political organization in, in France. And uh, they love uh, Leon de Grel, who was an SS member in, in uh, Flanders during the Second World War. So these people are Nazis. And this French guy told me that one of his goals and his agenda is to basically get rid of multinational corporations in France and have a reliance on local businesses and local markets. And to base our economy on cottage industry, local shops, and banning all speculative systems. And you know, in those days, this was back in 2000 and I want to say 16. In those days, you know, parties, groups like Civitas were considered on the fringe. They were growing, but they were considered on the fringe. 2017 saw a big change in that. But in 2016, a lot of that stuff was considered crazy. They were called Nazis and all that stuff. But I think that rhetoric that I heard from people like Perón, rhetoric that we hear from people like that, is going to become mainstream. It's going to become popular. It's going to become regular. And it's going to lead to a political revolution that will transition the world into a new zeitgeist. One, not really a new zeitgeist, but really a return to a past zeitgeist. One of national socialism, one, on, one of communism, extreme socialism, extreme Marxism. And you're also going to be seeing the rise of things like Turkish nationalism, which will be a fusion between racialism and Islamism. And so what we are seeing currently, we've been seeing this for years now, you know, be it the 08 crash, be it the 2015 migrant crisis, be it the coronavirus crisis that we're living through right now. What we are currently witnessing is an acceleration towards global fanaticism and ultimately a global conflict. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this message. Hope you guys have enjoyed this message. I hope the music from the 30-something-year-old uh, the 30 boomer across the road didn't bother you too much. That's if you guys hear it. I don't know if you guys hear the music. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. You guys just heard some Theo. Laji, God bless.